Hello students, I'm Dr. B and we're going to work on the STEM case on enzymes in gizmos today. You can get to gizmos by accessing Clever in many school districts um, or you can just log into gizmos itself. I'm going to mute this crazy cool music. We're a veterinary tech working in a small animal hospital. It's your job to help animals maintain good health and recover from injury or disease. Our first patient is Claire. She's a great Dane. Her owner brought her to the hospital because Claire is eating a lot of food, but she's losing weight. And that's a serious health issue. So she's lost more than 30 pounds while still eating normally. No history of disease and not enough energy to play, but an increased appetite. So something's up with Claire and it's our job to figure it out. Claire's symptoms suggest there is a problem with her metabolism. If you don't understand a word, you can look it up here and we find that metabolism is the word for all of the chemical reactions that happen in the body. If you're working on the sheet that goes with this lab, for my class, um, we just found the first answer, metabolism. Metabolism is the term for all chemical reactions that happen in an organism. A healthy metabolism is important in maintaining homeostasis. Remember, homeostasis is balance. Many things in organisms, uh, especially vertebrate organisms, stay in balance like oxygen, uh, blood pressure, blood sugar, temperature. To help restore homeostasis for Claire, we need to learn more about her metabolism. So we need to go to the handbook. You can see Claire is very, what we'd say, emaciated, so very thin um, in a way that's very bad. Um, she's missing a lot of her muscle tissue here, and that's probably one of the reasons she can't play because she's, she's so starved that she doesn't, she's losing her muscles. So let's read all about the enzymes. Metabolism is the term for all chemical reactions that happen in the body, and many of those chemical reactions are driven by enzymes. Enzymes, remember, are proteins that catalyze reactions and help them happen faster. An organism's metabolism includes two types of reactions. One type is reactions that break things down. For example, chemical reactions are used to break down food into smaller pieces, just like you break this down. And another kind of chemical reactions, like building muscle tissue, would be putting different pieces of amino acids back together. You're building a protein. You can also build carbohydrates and other biological molecules. Let's take a look inside the cell. All chemical reactions involve chemical substances called reactants. These are what you start with. These are the ingredients for your chemical reaction. What you end up with are, is called products. Just like if you bake um, a cake, you put flour, sugar, and all that into the cake, and you end up with cake. That's your product. Your reactants are your flour, sugar, eggs, butter, and your product is the cake. So here are reactants. Let's start this chemical reaction. Now they're stuck together with a chemical bond. And they make something new. Something that's different from what you started with. In chemical reaction below, predict what will happen to the amount of reactants and products when the chemical reaction starts. So the reactants since they're getting used up in the reaction, 
are probably going to go down. The products, since that what we're making in the reaction, they're going to go up. They're going to increase. So let's see what happens. I skipped a couple steps here. Okay, let's submit our answer. Oh, good. When the reaction starts, the reactants get used up so their amount decreases. The reaction makes more products so their amount increases. So reactants go down, our ingredients go down, and our products go up. The speed at which a chemical reaction happens is called the reaction rate. In science, the word rate refers to how quickly something happens. Um, for example, uh, you might have heard miles per hour, that's a rate. Um, or in other countries, it's kilometers per hour. Or if you make $12 an hour babysitting, that's a rate. We'll look at the number of products made in two seconds from a chemical reaction. Let's click to play and see how many products are made in two seconds. Here's slower. So that's four products. Now let's play the faster option. Oh, all of them are made. In, so we make six products in two seconds. So when we do, when we calculate reaction rates, we use a formula, which is the chemical products produced divided by the time. Let's show the formula. So amount of product, usually that's measured in something besides molecules here. We're just counting the single molecules. We don't do that in real life. And we divide it by time. And that gives us a rate. We're going to enter data here. So for the first one, we get four products in two seconds. So that's two products per second. Graphs allow scientists to analyze data to see what this reaction looks like on a graph. So on the y-axis, we have amount of product. Over here, we have time in seconds. So we're going to plot the first four products in two seconds. That's our first point. We started with zero, so we can connect those two data points right here. Using the graph, how much product would be made if we stop the reaction at four seconds? So at four seconds, we want to go here, we want to go up, and we want to go over, and right here it says eight. So again, I went up, and then I went over, and that's eight. Perfect. We did it correctly. So this is a graph for a different reaction. Here the amount of product is measured in milligrams. That's more standard. A milligram is a thousandth of a gram. What is the reaction rate? Is it two milligrams per second, four milligrams per second, or eight milligrams per second? Well, let's see. We have 16 milligrams here, and we have four seconds. 16 divided by four, 16 milligrams divided by four seconds is four milligrams per second. 
Let's see if we were correct. All right, cool. Why are reaction rates important? For organisms to survive and grow, the chemical reactions must happen very quickly. So let's add some enzyme. Adding enzymes speeds up digestion. They're essential for our metabolism, for us to break down our food and absorb the, pro uh, the products of those reactions. If we add enzyme, we can also build molecules as well. We don't just break them down, we can build them in our body to make muscles, to make skin, to make um, energy. Let's learn more about enzymes here. They're proteins that make chemical reactions happen faster. Not all proteins are enzymes, but all enzymes are proteins. They're kind of, there's the big group of proteins, and then there's a smaller group inside that group that are enzymes. Substances that increase the rate of a chemical reaction are called catalysts. Enzymes are catalysts that organisms use to speed up their chemical reaction. People use other kinds of catalysts, often metals. In your catalytic converter on your car, um, platinum is used. That's why people sometimes try to steal them. Platinum is a very valuable metal. For example, the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen form ammonia is important in both organisms and in chemistry. This reaction is slow and the rate must be increased with a catalyst. This is how fertilizer is made, which is really important in feeding the world. Enzymes catalyze this reaction in cells. People need to catalyze it with metal ions, pressure, temperature, etc. In a lab, the catalyst is iron. What effect would the enzyme have on the amount of product made in three seconds? Do you think it would speed it up, slow it down, or no change? Since by definition, enzymes are catalysts and they speed up reactions, make them more likely to happen, it would increase the rate. What effect would enzymes have the time to make one milligram of product? Well, think about this in terms of your car. If you have a higher speed, which is miles per hour, and you're trying to get somewhere, if you're going faster, you get there in less time. So let's say you're driving to visit a friend and it takes 20 minutes if you're going 30 miles per hour on the side streets, but if you take the freeway and you can go 60 miles an hour, it goes much faster. The same is going on here. What effect would the enzyme have on the time it takes to make one milligram of product? Well, if your rate is higher, the time you need to do a particular task is going to decrease. Just like it takes less time to drive to your friend's house if you take the freeway and go faster. Let's look at a graph. The reaction rate of a chemical reaction was measured with and without an enzyme. Which line is the reaction with the enzyme? Amount of product made over time. This is the amount of product and this is time. Which one looks faster? Which one is steeper? Because the rate is represented by the slope of the line. Slope is how steep the line is. Is it very, um, would it be hard to ride your bike up? Or is it very gentle? This is a steep slope, it's a bigger number. This is a smaller number. With an enzyme, it should be faster. So I'm gonna pick line A and say enzymes catalyze reactions, which makes them go faster 
speed of the reaction or rate is represented as slope. Now let's test our predictions. The two cells below contain the reactant needed for the ammonia and H3 reaction. Add enzymes to one of the cells. Let's see what happens. A lot more products are made with the enzymes. Enzymes not only speed things up, but they make things more likely to happen. What effect would the enzyme have on the amount of product made in three seconds? It's going to increase the product and decrease the amount of time it takes to make the product. Let's reveal the answer here. We were correct. And it says enzymes increase the reaction rate, causing the reaction to make more product. Line A shows the reaction that formed more product. So line A must be the reaction with the enzyme. We're gonna look at the structure in the enzymes in the next part of this video. So I'll sign off for now. Thanks for watching and make sure you're filling out your lab sheets.